Amen. Good to be Psalms 107 and verse 9. For he satisfieth the longing soul. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? He satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. I'm going to speak on this thought this morning, the longing of my soul. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you today for your presence, your power, your love. We're thankful, Lord, that you are always with us, that you'll never leave us, never forsake us. You are always a very present help, Lord, in our time of trouble. We call upon you today, God, and we ask you to move in our midst. Let your spirit touch each and every heart that is here today, God. Let the comforter come right now. Lead us, guide us into the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Longing. When you look that word up in the Hebrew, it's shakak. Didn't that sound interesting, shakak? But basically, it gives you seven times in the, or six times rather, in the King James where it's used, and it's translated run to and fro, longing, ranging, appetite, run, jostle, one against another. It gives the thought of to seek greedily, to have an appetite. One of the scriptures where it talks about, and these scriptures that I'm going to read to you give an insight into this word longing. And think about it, the longing soul. As a roaring lion and ranging bear. That's how Proverbs 28 and 15 describes it. So what do you think about when you think about a roaring lion seeking, continually prowling, the lion in a cage? As he walks back and forth in front of that glass, oh, they bring food out to him, but that food is not what satisfies the longing that is in his heart. I guarantee you there's a longing to stretch out his legs and, and get out on the big tundra of the plains and to run. He longs to be free, or a ranging bear who is seeking out in his area that he patrols over, his habitat that he lives in. Oh, I think about a longing that is never satisfied. That is the longing of my soul. There is a longing that says, of things I have had my fill, and yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Isaiah 29 and 8 says, It shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Oh, there's a hunger in my soul that this world will never satisfy I can tell you today that only Jesus can satisfy your soul. With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. There is a gnawing, a desire, a hunger to move closer to him than I've ever been before. But many times, many times we... We try to set out to find our desires, to achieve what we desire. Really, we're going about it the wrong way. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Oh, we need to go about it in God's way. If we will seek Him 
first. Then he will take care of all of our needs and he will provide for us. Oh, David did not desire to be rich. He did not desire to be revenged upon his enemies. But what he desired was to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, to be close to God, to have a walk with God. Oh, many times we have a pursuit of the material possessions in this world or we're chasing after success in a career. We get obsessed with frivolous toys and the things of this world. But what we need to do is commit our way unto God and trust also in Him. Oh, don't take your hunger to the world. Take your hunger to God. There's a knowing hunger that you feel within your soul. It's time to listen to your thirst. Listen to your thirst. Your soul is saying, I need fellowship with God. Your soul is crying out saying, I need more of you. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. That is the longing of my soul today, more of him. But many times we spoil our appetites. We know what it's like with the little ones. They want to eat Oreo cookies and chocolate pudding. But then when it comes time to eat dinner, they've spoiled their appetite. He satisfies the longing soul. And fills the hungry soul with goodness. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Or how about these words from Isaiah? Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Only God can satisfy the longing soul. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Longing. Another place where that word is used is in Isaiah 33 and 4. It says, And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts. And when you think about the longing that is inside of you, think about the locusts. In Exodus, Moses was talking about the locusts. It says, Else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring locusts into, the co- into thy coast. Exodus 10 and 14 says, And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees. There remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Oh, what are you saying? It was overwhelming. Right? And that's what it's talking about. That same word for longing is talking about how the locusts, the locusts run. It's, it shall the locust to and fro of the locust shall he run upon them. So think about as the locust ran to and fro, 
greedily seeking and searching up every green thing so they could devour it. Oh, that is how my soul feels about the things of God. I hungrily go after the things of God. There is an insatiable hunger within me that says, I want more. I want more of you, God. Kind of like Elisha, when he looked over and he said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon him or like Job said oh that I might know where I may find him my soul thirsteth for thee my flesh longeth for thee oh that thou wouldest rend the heavens that thou wouldest come down how about it Are you ready to see God move in your life? If you want to see God move in your life, you're going to have to hold up your cup and allow him to fill it. It says, he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking the things that could not satisfy And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. The longing that is in my soul. It compares it in Nahum 2 and 4. It says, The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall jostle one against the other. Think about that. A chariot jostling as it runs through the streets. It could speak of an overwhelming number of chariots. There's so many of them that even though the street's broad, they're bumping into each other as they jostle through the streets. But I liked it as I read it. I thought about a race. The chariots racing through the streets as they jostle through one another. Oh, that is my desire for the things of God. I therefore so run. Can you say that? I therefore so run, so fight I, not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it in subjection. What does it say? It says, I have such a desire for the things of God that I'm willing to push myself aside. And the things of God so overwhelm me that I'm focused upon God. And I want that more than anything. The longing of my soul is to be closer to God than I've ever been before. Whoo. In Joel chapter 2, he talks about they shall run to and fro in the city. He's talking about this army that's going to come. It says in verse 1, Blow you the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spreads upon the mountain. A great people and strong. A fire devours before them and behind them a flame burneth. Nothing shall escape them. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one in his ways and not break their ranks. As he's describing this army, he says they shall run to and fro to the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in the windows. As you're reading that, what are you saying? Never going to stop. That's what it's saying. Oh, and when I talk about the longing in my soul, it's a longing that's never going to stop. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop 
praising his name. Oh, I just keep running and moving, moving forward for my God. I bring my body in subjection. I do everything I can to get myself closer to him than I've ever been. There's a longing in my soul. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. Woo! Pour out. The Hebrew word shafak is a hundred times in your Bible. And it talks about pour out. The priest shall take the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar. Or how about this one here in 2 Kings 4 and 4. And when thou art come in the house, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Oh, God wants to open the windows of heaven and begin to pour out his presence in your life. Oh, but you know what? The oil stopped flowing when there were no more empty vessels. Guess what you need to do today? If there is a longing in your soul for more of God, pour out your heart. It says in 1 Samuel 1 and 10, Talking about Hannah. She was in bitterness of soul. She prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verse 13, it says, Now Hannah, she spake in her heart only, spake in her heart only, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and she says, No, I'm not drunk, but I have poured out my soul. Woo! It's time to take your heart and just begin to open it up before God and begin to pour out the contents. In Psalms 22, when it talks about the crucifixion of our Lord, it says he was deserted, reproached, derided, humbled, pierced, shamed, and emptied. I am poured out like water. I am poured out like water. How about this? I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to him I freely give. Oh, it's time today to say, Lord, I want to, with joy, draw waters out of the well of salvation. But if you're going to draw waters out of the well of salvation, you need an empty vessel to put the water in. A longing soul says, I will do whatever it takes. I will run to and fro, I will jostle, I will fight, I will climb, I will do whatever is necessary to make it to my God because I hunger after the things of God. That is what I desire today. I need you, God, more than I've ever needed you before. I'm facing challenges in my life, Lord, that only you can handle. There's a hunger in my soul. My soul longs for you, God. Jesus, we're depending on you. Oh, they came to the water, and they did not know what to do. But Jesus, we're depending on you. If you look right before that verse, number 9, I, I like the one in verse 8. It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord. 
for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Sometimes we need to look at our life and realize God has done so many great things for us. But I will tell you this. It's what you mete out that is measured back to you again. You believe that? So if you will begin to pour out, empty yourself before the Lord, listen to this promise. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out. I will pour out my spirit. Oh, Lord, here's an empty vessel. I would like for you to fill it up today, God. I would like to see you open the windows of heaven and begin to pour out such a blessing in my life uh, that I cannot contain it. Uh, Oh, are you ready to say with the psalmist today, I am poured out like water. Oh, it is time to open up your heart and just begin to pour out your burdens, your worries, your cares. Uh, Take them to the Lord and leave them there. Oh, the longing of my soul today is for more of God. But if you want more of God, you're going to have to give him a vessel that he can pour his spirit into. Are you ready for the things of God in your life? Oh, why don't we stand right now? Let's stand to our feet right now and begin to talk to the Lord. One thing have I desired oh I'm desiring more of you today God the longing of my soul is to have you in my life you are the Lord of all Jesus I give you my heart today I surrender all to you today I lift up my cup Lord and I ask you to fill it up with your spirit today oh God come into my life in a real way be the Lord of all all Jesus seek him seek him today with all your heart oh be like Jacob of old he wrestled through the night trying to find him oh it's time to hang on and say God I've got to have you Hallelujah. Let's find a place to pray. Everyone talk to the Lord right now about the longing in your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.